Throughout history, free thinkers have outraged the religious with their wacky ideas about the virtues of free speech, reason, and of course, eating babies. Now, God is dying, and it's time to dispose of his remains. From the pits of hell, Satan sends two puppets of the imperialist West and the Zionist Jews against God, Islam, and tiny kittens to bring you their propaganda and conspire for a new world order. This is Secular Jihadist for a Muslim Enlightenment with Ali Rizwi and Armin Navabi. Welcome, everybody, to another episode of Secular Jihadist for a Muslim Enlightenment. My name is Ali Rizvi, and with me is Armin Navabi. Armin, how's it going? Good. Thanks for so, having me. Um, <laughs> so this is a, uh, we're doing a special episode today, and this is about uh, the recent incident that happened in Paris. There's a young teacher named Samuel Paty in uh, in well, in a suburb of Paris, he was a teacher, a middle school teacher, uh, about two years older than me, right? So, relatively young guy. <laughs> uh, he was decapitated in broad daylight for teaching his students about free expression, and while he was doing it, he showed them one of the Charlie Hebdo Muhammad cartoons. Um, Charlie Hebdo, as many of you know, is the the paper, the satirical newspaper, uh, where uh, a dozen uh, people, their staff was gunned down in cold blood in a jihadist attack in 2015. Emmanuel Macron, the president of France, called the beheading an Islamist, an Islamist terrorist attack. And so what we're going to do is we're going to kind of get into this because this relates to something that we talk about a lot here, uh, which is blasphemy and freedom of speech. Um, so... Yeah, we're going to get into this incident. I think one of the main things that I wanted to talk about here, Armin, is uh, the fact that it seems like there was this one 18-year-old kid who did this, but it wasn't just him. There was a lot that went on. There were many people who uh, were protesting against it, were threatening the guy who had posted his address. So we're going to get into the details of the story as well. But was- yeah, and I'm gonna I'm gonna try to re- try to represent some uh, people from the other side. The, I, I I hope like. I need to clarify. I'm just trying to maybe play some devil's advocate from people that are concerned more about the backlash and uh, what they call Islamophobia that is going to result to this. And the people, I'm going to try to mention the people who say that this is um, the result of other things other than Islam. Um, they, you know, Susanna also did a really good job in showing, you know, finding some of tweets of the people that were trying to challenge the narrative that this is Islamic. Again, I'm just clarifying because last time when I did some mention some of these things, a lot of people got so butthurt. Um, you know, I did like this woke thingy and a lot of people were confused. I'm just going to mention them just so that we could address them. Some of them I might agree with, some of them I might not. But I'll bring it up anyways, okay? So don't get like, don't get too offended. Um, if you think mm-hmm. like I'm saying something that is absolutely ridiculous, okay, just hold like, yeah, but go well, on. for the record, I mean, the people who are saying that this wasn't uh, related to Islamic jihadism, uh, there are several witnesses who told the police that they heard him say Allahu Akbar. Uh, he also, no, that's not what they mean. I mean, what they mean is is not that he wasn't motivated by Islam, but they say like, what he know, did wasn't just, Islamic. That and also and also what pushes people over the edge to do something like that is not Islam because there's many Muslims in um, in the conditions that people grow uh, grow up with the discrimination that they face is the lack of hope, the poverty, the lack of sense of belonging. That is what pushes people over the edge because you see Muslim communities. There are not other Muslim other Muslims are not doing this right. There are many other Muslims that are living but you know they are there's you know you know, like muslims in canada are not doing this for example right yeah um, well, i mean there are so, other people who are in like more oppressed conditions also uh from other groups that are not doing this as well uh, they don't yeah they don't subscribe to an ideological system that uh so we'll get to that but let's yeah. let's address some of these issues right but so we'll get to those yeah Go ahead. yes i i wanted to 
there are so what this guy did was again uh, he he beheaded him um, pretty close to the school where he taught. Right, he was a middle school teacher. Um, he yelled Allahu Akbar during the attack, according to witnesses. And then uh, what he did was uh, he went online, right, and on Twitter actually, and his uh, he had a, a he had a pseudonym uh, over there that was the prosecutors and law enforcement authorities identified as belonging to him. His name was Abdullah Anzorov, uh, the murderer, um, and he posted a photo of Samuel Pati's severed head, and he posted it with a message saying, "quote." In the name of Allah, the most gracious, the most merciful, to Macron, leader of the infidels, I executed one of your hellhounds who dared to belittle Muhammad, calm his fellow human beings before a, car, before a harsh punishment is inflicted on you, end quote. So that was his message uh, when he did it. So c- clearly, like, there's no doubt about his motivation. He may have had mental health issues. He may have you know, a whole bunch of other things. All of those issues come up, and I guess we're going to talk about it later, uh, but that is what he cited was his primary motivation. Um, and he, although he acted alone and he was the one person who did it, uh, there were several things uh, going up, going on before the murder happened, right? So when Pati actually showed these images uh, in the classroom, that there was another parent of another child um, named uh, Brahim uh, Chinina. Well, I don't know how to pronounce his name, but that's how it's written. Um, he accused Patti of disseminating sort of obscene images to middle school students. Um, and he made a YouTube video. He went online and he said that Patti had displayed, um, you know, the image of Muhammad. Um, he, he mentioned Samuel Patti by name. Uh, he actually gave the address of the school. And then he also asked other parents to join him uh, and and start a movement against the teacher, right? Against Samuel Pati. So that was uh, one aspect of it. Uh, there was a a mosque, um, what a, a prominent mosque uh, that also uh, published a video related to this on their Facebook page, and this was around a week before the murder happened. Um, that was also that that had a lot of threats against Pati as well. And then for some reason they came out later on and. Um, they tried to walk it back and they started talking about how Islam is a religion of peace uh, when they had actually, in a way, put out these threats online uh, and this guy had been motivated. So it wasn't just one guy. When we're talking about, um, you know, one person who went crazy, who had a psychotic break or, you know, whatever it is, we've got his message. We've got his motivation. We have this group of people um, the the girl's father who had initially filed a complaint, by the way, his daughter wasn't even in the class. Right? So Susanna saying, I can't get the image of his eyes rolled back and severed head out of my mind. I haven't even seen it. I don't know if I want to. Um, so this is just, uh, you know, obviously it's brutal, but I, this there were many parties that were involved in this. Right? There was an ideological basis for this. And this brings just to light the idea of um, freedom of speech versus blasphemy. Uh, so so the two things, one of the parents who, the, the parent of the girl uh, who initially did the most complaining, uh, his daughter wasn't in the class. The second thing is, Patti had actually told the Muslim students in his class, he'd given them the option of leaving. Like, you know, I'm going to show this if you want to leave and if you feel this will offend you. You can leave the class. So he, let's be more clear. So he told the students that I'm going to show cartoons of Muhammad. The, the subject is about freedom of expression, but I don't want to force this on anybody who doesn't want to see it. So if there's any Muslims who are offended by this, they can leave the class right now. Right. So he gave yeah. them that option. All right. He did. Um, right. So, but here's the thing, Ellie. You we you you seem to be trying to make this bigger than what it is. Like. The other Muslims who were complaining about this class, the mosque, and also the person, the parent, even if he didn't have the kid in the class who was complaining, they were also, they didn't participate in the beheading. Of course not. They're, yeah, and they didn't condone it. They were just complaining about something that they didn't like. 
and they were exercising their freedom of expression. And now we see Macron going out and closing down, down the, like the mosque. What did the mosque do? The mosque that was put, like complaining about the teacher. Like I'm seeing a lot of people um, talking about the mosque that this is more than just one guy. But it seemed like, no, it was just one guy. Everybody else was just highlighting this. They the didn't the like mosque the put out threats. What kind of threats? I'll look them up right now. But go ahead. Make was, a it case. was it death threats? It wasn't death Probably. Threats. Well, look, Armin, that's not, I mean, the point I'm, I'm not saying that everybody called for his beheading exactly, and this is what they did. That's not the way that these things. But threats work. mean like there should be consequences, as in the teacher should be fired. Like threats could be threats of like getting the teacher fired. Well, yeah, uh, I'll find out escalate. about that. Okay. But, but I'm just saying it seems there seems to be. Um, there seems to be an attempt by anti-Islam activists to say, to make a problem bigger than it actually is, to make themselves more relevant. That's what I, that's what I come across as, right? Like, oh, because it cannot just be, it cannot just be one guy doing one horrible, horrific act of, you know, that we call out this like we like no this is this is like oh no it's a mosque it's the other muslim parent um we just want to make it like we're kind of doing what the woke people do right when it comes to like racism we're trying to inflate how significant the threat is so that more people are afraid okay so that let me know if you find the um oh yeah susanna is saying on sunday two muslim Algerian women were Stabbed at first at the Eiffel Tower. Wait, was this? Wow, that's pretty recent. Okay, so again, that's yeah. I don't know if I could confirm that right now live on air. Susanna is dropping. I mean, Susanna is very reliable, so I guess that's it. Another thing I wanted no, to no, that's not actually true. I read about that. There were two Muslim women who were stabbed, and and if anybody uh, has information about the threats, because what I'm seeing, uh, it'd be all the news reports about the mosque say that uh, they had uh, they put up videos that were. Um, quote, venting for against the Sampati. So they were kind of drumming up um, a campaign against Sorry, this guy. Can you say that again? You got you got cardiac. You didn't understand what you just said. Can you say that one, like, one more time? The news reports are saying that they vented hatred. These The, the mosque, the videos that they shared, vented right. hatred against What does that man. mean, example? Hatred. Like, yeah, they a, hated if, the cartoon. They're allowed to hate the cartoon. And they're allowed to express like freedom of expression. We're like, oh, we're trying to, we're trying to defend freedom of expression. Oh, this teacher, like we, like we, in the name of freedom of expression, we're going after the people who just announced their hatred of a cartoon. I mean, it's their freedom of expression to be able to announce their hatred for the cartoon as well. Yeah, their hatred. Uh, not, they could, they hate, they could hate it. They could hate it as much as they want. They could they're, hate the teacher. They could hate the teacher for posting for po showing the cartoon, and they are they're they they should be it's completely within the right to announce their hatred for the teacher, um, for posting the cartoons. And what do you say about like uh, telling people to mobilize against the teacher, target him, posting the address okay. of the school? Okay, doxing should be legal. Oh. Well, that's address the, of the school? Oh no, I thought you said address of the principal. address of the school, as in this is where you can find him. This is where the guy teaches. That's well, where they you say can build. to do to do what? Again, it really depends on the kind to do protests in front of a school. Yeah, yeah sure, I, go about it. Share the address of the school and mobilize the so, protests in front of the school. That's all within freedom I mean, of expression. Yeah. Yeah. So, so what you're saying, and again, like I want to actually get your real position on this. I know the devil's advocate thing, but I also want to get mm -hmm. your personal position on this because sometimes we lose that when we do this this no, thing. Right now, but, I'm just wondering. Right now, I'm just wondering. Yeah, yeah. What's the, what's so, the, what, 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 what did the mosque do wrong? So usually, what happens is that we tend to take all of this stuff very, very, very literally, like unless. Um, everybody specifically said that go and kill this man right then nobody has a role to play in it all of them are exempt and just practicing freedom of speech and there's this one lone wolf like the mosque didn't say to go and kill him these people didn't say to go and kill him all they did was they just drummed up a campaign against this guy saying this is where you can find him go and protest against him, do all, you know, all that um and all of these things are somehow unnected 
that nobody's saying, nobody's saying, Armin, that the people from the mosque, right, should be tried the same way that this guy is for murder. Right? You're didn't not they shut murder. down the mosque? Didn't they, they shut, did down, shut the down, down the mosque? Yeah, they did mm. shut down the mosque. For okay. for what? For targeting a school teacher for. Right. So effectively, the- effectively in the name of defending free speech. Okay. So yeah, even if it's connected, but you can't prove that it's connected. No, that's not har- harassment. Is not free speech. Once you say that, okay. Where is the harassment? You, the target har- 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 so harassment. G- this is a problem, what? Ali. This is a problem. So basically, you're arguing that. People, so if that, if that's how you're categorizing harassment, then me and my black. Uh, so if, if a, what do you think, Ali? Like if a black, let's say in a, in one school in the United States, right? Um, they are now teaching. They're trying to erase the history. Like, let's say like in Texas, the board school of education is trying to remove the history of slavery, or they're trying to whitewash it, right? Mm-hmm. And the BLM organizers, public, you know, they say they hate this. They they post the names of the people on the board who are trying to remove this from um, education. They 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 from the from the books, right, from the classes, and they they post the address of the board for people, and they're trying to organize a campaign, a protest in front of the building that this is being made this this decision is being made to go on protest based on your standards of what you're saying this is har- this could also be categorized as harassment and illegal should i shut down that blm chapter because of they were mm. because they were the, should the government so, yeah, get involved and shut it down not just me according to the law first of all if you're taking one person That's- and targeting if you're taking one person and targeting them, right, and you're saying that there's this person, this administrator in this school who's trying like to do Trump. that. Like yeah, Trump. Amy, 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 Con- what's her name? Amy Barrett. Trump has Secret Service protection. He's a, you know, he's a administrative official. But what we're saying is, and you know, you can't say, okay, everybody go to the White House and, you know, do this, do that. There's a distance that you have to stay behind when you're trying to protest, first of all, legally, right? The second thing is that if you're targeting one person, you give the address of the school, that person doesn't have security protection, then they are able to go to the police and say that, look, I'm getting this sort of mass targeting, I'm being targeted for uh, harassment, m- me personally. Um, they Everybody knows where my location is. They're telling them where to find me. I am scared. I find my life in danger. So the police will actually, that is something that is illegal. So you cannot do that. That's targeted I'm just saying, be careful. Be careful when people yeah, are yeah, angry. Be careful. I, I, I know no, what I'm like. Hold on, Ali. Yeah. Um, what I'm saying to the audience is when, pe- when you get angry, okay, that's exactly the best time for people to come out and violate freedoms. Okay, because people are passionate, people are scared, scared and angry. Okay, that is when enlightenment values are at the greatest risk, when people get angry and scared. And you have to when when especially when people who you like are targeted, it's, you know, when it comes to violence and death, and people who are wrong, especially when they're where they were on your side, it's e- those are the easiest times for you to all of a sudden let go of the enlightenment values that you were supposed to protect in the name in fact you betray them in the name of defending them right it's easy to protect democracy free speech um due process when the people who are benefiting from the from protecting those values are on your side okay when people go after ex-muslims or they go after atheists right when they violate their rights when they shut them down if they're on your side it's easy to defend enlightenment values at those, t- at those times, right? But all, when they go after the rights of the people who are not in your camp, especially if right after somebody associated with their group did something vile and disgusting, then you're, that's when you're being tested to see if you're actually on the side of enlightenment values or not, right? Yeah, that, that's whatever true. The, that's irrelevant. Whatever the, right, whatever the right answer is, I'm not saying maybe, you know, Ali, mm. you may be right or wrong. What, whatever the right answer is and what the right measure is, I'm just saying be careful when you're angry. Be yeah. careful when you're scared. 
to not to be so not I, to betray these values. But go ahead. I I think we know that. But like so, let's just do what I'll I'll talk about U.S. law. Okay, so in U.S. law. There was a case against the Westboro Baptist Church. Remember the Westboro Baptist Church? You know, the people who went to picket the funerals of soldiers and they had signs that says uh, that said, God hates, well, I can't, I'm not going to say it, but uh, it was a derogatory term for gay people. Um, and, you know, all these like horrible things. And they would go and picket the funerals of, of American soldiers. That went to the Supreme Court. Um, and the Supreme Court ruled eight to one right, that they should be allowed to protest. They should be allowed to protest the funerals, but it has to be at a distance, right? You can't do targeted, you you can't target a single person and harass them and go to their place of business, their place of work, anything. Even if you're going to protest, you'll see whenever you see these protests, there has to be a, uh, a distance that is maintained. So if the business is operating or the school is operating, it should not interfere with the operations of the school. You can't go and forcibly shut down the school. Yeah, but this mosque hasn't even planned, like we didn't even see what their action was. They were they just, uh, we they were just saying like, that. yeah, so if we didn't someone even can know. Look it up, can someone look it up? I don't know, Susanna, if you can find out like what this mosque actually said and what kind of videos they shared. Um, I would do it. They, we're not doing this live they, sh- live they, right shared, they shared the car. They, well, I mean, they mentioned the cartoons. They posted, they mentioned the address of the school. They, they, you know, they mentioned the teacher, mentioned the teacher. teacher. Yeah, obviously. So that changes a lot of things. The key thing is that they didn't do any death threats. That's what Uh, the key uh, thing uh, is. uh, But that's what I'm trying to say. The point over here isn't that every person who is. Yeah. But even if you're right. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you made that point. Right. Yeah, Mm -hmm. Yeah. But the thing is that if somebody is doing. Hint, hint. Okay, first of all, I don't know if they were actually trying to be responsible for the death of the teacher and they were hiding it. That's a major accusation, okay? That is a major accusation. But even if it's true, okay, then what you can do is, you, like, the response to that shouldn't be something... Because given, the, given that they didn't do anything illegal, okay? Let's say, for example, Ali, somebody comes and spreads some ideas that it's eventually leads to my death mm-hmm. okay but and we know that that kind of s- saying those things leads to my death okay and we know that if anybody reasonable knew that it could have that saying those things increases risks on me but they did all of those things without violating any laws they didn't do a direct death threat against me they didn't do any doxing against me okay Everything they did was within, you know, within the boundaries of reasonable laws, right? Yeah, that, that's the um, MO that people like us, like me, Ra- Enlightenment people fall me, for, right? And we get let me finish. Try. Let me finish. Yeah. Um, the thing is that I'm not saying they didn't do anything wrong. So we will only be falling for that. We would be duped by it if we don't see the problem, Okay. But again, the government, but if they did everything within the bounds of the law, then the government has no authority to come out and stop them. There is nothing mm-hmm. like we like. There is one thing for you to say: this was wrong. We condemn it. Here's the problem. We need to find a solution. I'm not saying you can't do those things. You can do those things, right? But if they op- operated within the boundaries of the law, then the government is overstepping if they come out and take an action against them. Yeah, so, uh, me saying the government cannot come and shut this mosque down is not the same as me saying they didn't do anything wrong. Not everything that is wrong gives the government the authority to come and take an action against it unless they already predetermined that by passing a law against it. Do you see what I'm saying? Are you looking at? Yeah, I else? see. I see what you're saying, but I don't. I don't know if uh, I. I don't know how relevant it is like this whole idea okay well i'm doing all of these things but i'm not breaking the law like that's not the conversation here i feel i feel like we're talking having a completely different conversation it should be the i mean the mosque was shut down there should be a conversation yeah and it was a temporary shutdown of the mosque okay while they're investigating what actually happened so there are other things that happened as well um there was also uh there is a uh, a group and there was a preacher who actually issued a fatwa against this another student uh, the student's father uh, was 48 years old, 
and yeah, they issued the fatwa against him. Um, so there were several different elements in this, and while they're doing this, right, they have a temporary order on shutting down the mosque, and I think that's perfectly reasonable because they're investigating it. They want to know what happened, just like we're investigating it. And so I, I don't, I don't think uh, that all of this. I mean, when people get away with things by saying, "Hey, you know, what I did wasn't illegal," uh, th that's what they do, and that's so. Yeah, and what's the solution to to arrest people who didn't do anything illegal or to shut them down that didn't like? I didn't. Uh, well, I mean, what's the solution? Look, Armin, if we were both in law enforcement. Okay, and we were part of the investigation, we're doing that. We would have to take a very, very agnostic and a very critical approach to everything like we are, but we're not. You know, we host a podcast, we're talking about the overall system, right? Yeah, that allows these also, things to happen, enables yeah, these things to happen. Okay, so, yeah. so what, yeah. let, me, let me say this. Yeah, so, yeah, you know, so ahead, what's sure. happening is that there was this 18 year old kid who killed him, right? Um, mm -hmm. Around that, there was this 48 year old father who was texting this guy. Okay, there was a mosque that was uh, telling everybody to go and target him. Uh, there was a um, this other father of the daughter uh, of the girl. I think it might be the same guy it was just saying saying the same thing. This is uh, uh, going online and actually doing what is legally considered harassment, singling out a single person, talking about a place of people to intercept it. So all of those things. They play into it. Yes, did all of them hold a knife to his throat? No. Did, did all of them say that they, someone should hold a knife to his throat? Probably not. Okay. Did someone chew a fatwa against it? Yes. All of these things work together. When you're talking about um, how things happen and all of the and the stuff that you know, not only what actually happened and the perpetrator and what they do, you're also talking about all of the other factors that enable it. Okay. Right, so, Ali for 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 instance. Right. Just let me give another example. Can you can I, before you give another example, can I respond to this? Okay, go ahead. Don't make sure you take notes so you don't forget your example. Okay. Okay. Uh, but you're responding to something that I didn't say. You know, you you guys. This is this is traumatic, right? Because again, I made it very clear that I'm not saying that there are, these elements do not play into it, right? And what I'm saying is. Just because they play into it, that doesn't mean the government can come and just ban everything that is plays into this, right? You you know what else plays into this? What? The Quran plays into this. The Quran is definitely plays into this. Mm -hmm. Do you think if it's all right? So what do you what do you what do you suggesting? Are you suggesting that we should ban the Quran, right? So me worrying about government. Uh, 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 hold on. No, let, let me let me let me let me. There's let me another straw man here. Sorry, sorry. Let me. No, clear no, no. no. I was. I didn't say that. You say that. I was coming okay, up with okay. an example. Okay, so it's okay. not a straw man. I was just giving you an example, right? I didn't say you're suggesting that we should ban the Quran. But I'm just. What I'm saying is that me worrying about government overreach and me worrying about authorities betraying enlightenment values is not a denial of. The other elements that could have been playing into this, right? But there's all sorts of government overreach that could be justified if we want to, if saying, using the phrase, well, this plays into this, this plays into this. There's an astronomical number of things that I could come up with that it plays into this, right? And if playing into this all of a sudden is, becomes an excuse for the government banning stuff, then there's, there's no limit to what the government can ban. But go on. Yeah, no, no, no. We're not just talking about all of the societal factors and everything plays into it. But when we are talking about it here, I'm not talking about bans. I'm not talking about shutting down things. I'm talking about an acknowledgement of a systemic issue, right? And how different gears in that systemic issue work together to result in certain outcomes. Okay. So when we talk about, like, you know, you're, you're talking about poverty. We're saying that you know this guy could have psychological problems. He could have struggled with oppression as a refugee. Uh, he had all of these factors matter. The factor that he subscribed to an ideology that actually endorses behavior like this, mm -hmm. right? That endorses punishing people for blasphemy. Right? All of these things, all of these factors. Yes, they do play into it. Over here, in the context of this, that's what we're talking about. There are law enforcement people. I know. Let me finish. There's okay. law enforcement people, okay, that will deal with what you're talking about. Like who did the actual knife cutting and the, the actual beheading? 
and uh, should we investigate all of these other institutions that may have been involved like this mosque should we temporarily shut them down while we investigate so there that's what law enforcement does okay then there are politicians like Emmanuel Macron right? and he will talk about how you know we need to change the way that we 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 have schools the way that we instill our values in our kids in schools we want to stop the homeschooling thing those are the initiative we have to stop foreign funding of mosques that's his initiative then there are people who actually talk about this like us there are commentators who zoom out who look at the big picture and they say well these are all of the elements that are going into it you know for example noam chomsky does that with foreign policy he's like these are the problems with foreign policy this is how it's resulting in these long-term effects and these are the effects that it has on different kinds of communities and different people. And this is how it's connected to the ideology. So there's, we are talking about this at different levels. You're talking about it from the strictly law enforcement kind of level, right? It's like the, uh, yeah. the conversation. But they don't contradict, Ali, they don't contradict each other. I don't understand I, I, I'm how you trying get to tell this. you that they don't contradict each other. I'm telling you. Yeah, that. so that's my entire point. So why why is this being a response to me, right? Because it's a, uh, no, it's a response to you because you were having this conversation and you're talking no, about the law enforcement. But my response, and we all agree just, on that. No, no, but my point is that people are violate might be okay violating some other people's right with the, because of this event that happened. Okay, this might be happening. I mm -hmm. need to look into it more. Okay. And in response to that, people are telling me that, I mean, what they said and did might have played into this horrible action that is, that is being taken. And like, okay, yeah, but what you're saying, it doesn't contradict my point that their rights could be, be, be violated. Is there Maybe their rights are being violated, and this is a danger for enlightenment values. And you yourself are saying these two things can be true at the same time. So mm -hmm. if they could be true at the same time, if, they, if one could be playing to, into the other one, and uh, my point, hold on, and my uh, point that their rights are being violated could also be true, then why is it that in response to me saying their rights could be, are being violated, somebody said, then the response is, well, this played into the other one. You yourself is, are, ad, uh, are admitting that mm -hmm. both of these could be true. So I then it, it's not a fair response to me. Not, not what I said. I, I didn't say, I don't agree that anybody's rights are being violated. I actually don't think that they are no, at all. It could, that's not what I'm okay. saying. I'm saying that law enforcement is cracking down on things. I think that they're doing it appropriately. So Susanna has a comment here saying, Gabriel Atal, a government spokesman said, those who participated in the public lynching of this teacher on social media are in some way also responsible for what happened. Mm -hmm. um, she's saying she disagrees with it. I actually agree with that because, you know, you're not saying that they're mm -hmm. guilty of what happened. They're not, you're not saying they should be tried. They should be held accountable for what happened. You're saying they're responsible. And responsible is a broad term. And I think that they are responsible for it. Right? It's so like saying be, this is being used to justify a level of crackdown that I might, I'm again, I have to look at the level of crackdown, but it might be it might be just we, I think it's, it's OK for us. I think it's justified for us to be worried about the backlash. Mm -hmm. Right. I think it justifies for us to be concerned, to have our guard, to be skeptical, to have our guards up or like, yes, like we condemn the act and we look at the, and we investigate what what happened. We look at all the elements that it was involved in making something like this possible, which is obviously Islam is like 90 percent of it. Right. Um, we we do all of those things, but we also also have to be concerned about the backlash not becoming something that is also a violation of freedom of expression. That is also not a violation of enlightenment values because that usually happens when people get angry, when people get defensive, when people get scared, that usually is what follows. Okay. And because that's usually what follows, then we need to like look at these things and be vigilant and be like, make sure that we are guarding enlightenment values on all sides. But go ahead. Yeah, and that's why I supported everything that the ACLU was doing after 9-11, right? After 9-11 happened, the ACLU was coming out and they were talking about how Muslims are being targeted, the Sikh being targeted, and, and all of that. So, you know, I, that part of it I agree with. The only part where we disagree is I don't think that that's what's happening here. We just had an episode last week, right, on Emmanuel Macron's statement that, you know, Islam is in crisis all over the world. We talked about him... Uh, making it compulsory for kids to, to go to school, even though parents do have a right to homeschool their kids. So 
uh, are their rights and are their liberties being cracked down on when they're saying we can perfectly capably, you know, uh, homeschool our children, right? But you want to integrate them. Like who says we have to integrate them? But the thing is, we both thought that was a really good idea at the time. So, you know, it really depends. A lot of this really is a matter. It really, really is a matter of how you interpret it. But in this case, the actions that have been taken, right, there have been about, I think, last I read around nine people who've been arrested uh, in, in connection with all of this. Um, there is including, you know, that father who, who pushed out the fatwa. Uh, they, they have shut down this mosque because right? they want to figure out what was going on with this mosque. And, right. you know, it's a shutdown for six months. They want to prevent, uh, you know, Islamist terrorism. They haven't shut down any other mosques. They haven't gone around and done a whole crackdown on, like, you know, what uh, Steve King in the U.S. was doing about surveilling all these mosques and things like that. And they're not doing that. I think that they're focused on this one specific crime and finding the connections with it and investigating them. And I think that that's completely appropriate. I don't think that cracks down on anybody's rights. Even even if it's completely appropriate, I think mm-hmm. it's I think it would I, I'm it's justified for us to be concerned. You know what I mean? We should be watching it, yeah, to make sure yeah. it doesn't go out of control. I think, yeah. yeah, I think I think given what happens when people like you know when when acts like this are used, because again, you know. When you have the entire society all of a sudden taking one side, right? Like not entire uh-huh. society. Like a, you, when, you, when you get a major push, when George Floyd is killed by police, yeah. when the te- a teacher is killed by an Islamist, right? You get a lot of passion. And this passion is such a powerful energy that could be used to all of a sudden justify things that shouldn't be justified. Do you know what I mean? Whenever people are, many, many people are unanimously agree that something was vile, something was a crime, something was disgusting, and, even, and especially if they're right, right? Especially if they're right, okay? Mm-hmm. Especially if the teacher, if it was a vile and horrible act, like George Floyd or this teacher, okay? Then that, the fact that they're right and the, the fact that a lot of people agree and the fact that there's a lot of push and a lot of passion and a lot of anger, a lot of fear behind it, things that could be used to justify things that shouldn't be justified. And if you're and whether, you know, and to keep an eye and try to keep like try to um, adjust for that and try to defend against that becomes very unpopular. Right. Because everybody's agreeing. Like, everybody agrees. Like, not everybody. You know what I mean. Like, a lot of people are like, what the hell, Armin? You know, like, do you think, like, black lives don't matter? Like, blah, blah, blah. Like, like you know, you get, you, all of a sudden, you get your friends and everybody, like, saying, like, coming out. Like, are, is this your response at, like, this tragic moment, Armin? Like, yeah, because everybody, be, because everybody is on the same side. Well, again, I'm exaggerating when I say everybody. Because so many people are on the same side and because there's a lot of, then that's, yeah, that concerns me because I can't, I know, like, I know that this is going to be used to pass something that w- in normal times more people would be judgmental about it. Because more, because a lot, especially because there's so many, pa- so even people who could see that something is wrong is happening, because of the passion that exists in kind of this environment, they get scared. They're like, this is not the right time for me to say this because I'm going to get kicked out of everywhere if I say this right now, right? Um, there's, because there's so much passion involved and other people are afraid they're going to lose their jobs, they're going to lose their friends, they're going to lose the community. I feel like it's my, my job at that in those kind of environment to ask the questions that people would have been asking if the passions were not running so high, right? Because I don't have that much of a price to pay compared to other people right and again that's you know i think it's responsible even even if i look into it and be like okay why well, fine it was everything was justified uh the government the french government handled this perfectly they didn't do too much overreach no one's rights were violated but you should be concerned given the history like i think like i'm is is reasonable to condemn this act call it violent Call it Islamic. Congratulate the French government for calling it Islamic instead of like dancing around it, calling it Asian or something like stupid like that or whatever. Um, identifying that you know this is something that needs to be addressed and like finally you know making it normalizing, uh, normalizing calling it out, calling this uh, dogma 
uh, out as they should and making giving excuses for other governments to do it as well because it's becoming normalized not by a, like a far right government but by somebody that is uh, celebrated in mainstream liberal left rather than you know um, so this is all good and you could acknowledge that but at the same time given that so many people agree you know making sure there is no much, the, the backlash is not unjustified i think that's all reasonable and i want to do i'm, I'm going to do that and given that too, so many people on our side are already um doing a good job at calling this out and condemning it and calling this islamic and calling out the ideology that is behind it i feel like not enough of us are showing concern about what's going to happen to muslims now in france what kind of a backlash our muslims are going to f- experience from this right Mm-hmm. Um, and I feel like that should be part of the conversation. Concern, concerns for collective punishment uh, on Muslims in France. Um, that is not the, o- the, the only people that are doing that right now are Muslims. And I'm like, why are Muslims the ones that are doing it? What, are, we, are the rest of us not worried about a backlash on the Muslim po- population in France? Are the rest of us not worried about average Muslims who are not even related to this event at all paying a price for this is no like why why is it that muslims are doing it why is it that ex-atheists and ex-muslims are not doing that and i think that should also be part of our narrative and discussion yeah i agree that that should be part of the narrative and i think that that's been um that that's been i mean that's why one of the things that the aclu does or actually used to do a lot more um is so great. I mean, they've been doing that since 9-11, right? So the, the, when, they, when they've been concerned about the backlash, and there has been a lot of backlash against Muslims. I mean, the entire, one of the reasons that the whole Trump presidency happened, a lot of these far-right authoritarian governments rose up in, uh, or, or parties rose up and gained popularity in Europe is, is because of anti-Muslim sentiment and anti-immigrant sentiment, anti-refugee sentiment, especially from countries like Syria and so on. So uh, people, all of what, what you're seeing is a backlash. That's kind of what we've been talking about. This is one of the reasons that I've been very concerned about it, probably more so than a lot of other people. Um, I'm good at, Susanna mentioned but, two Muslims were, or two Muslim women were stabbed. After they were this. stabbed I'm, near the Eiffel Tower, yeah. Yeah, I'm going to yeah. go look into that. I'm going to see if we could highlight that. So thank you. By the way, Susanna is also, Susanna is like, Look at this, all this information here. Susanna is also telling us the Grand Mosque of uh, Pantin had shared a video on its Facebook page before the attack that vented hatred against history teacher Samuel Patti. And again, yeah. we could call this out as some responsible, but again, this I think this, if, if this should be allowed. This definitely should be allowed. Uh, saying hatred against the history teacher on Facebook page should be allowed. And anybody that wants to ban this, Anybody that wants to ban somebody posting hatred against a history teacher, I'm going to fight against that. I, I'm going to fight against any ideology that tells you that you can't say that you hate a history teacher. It's a because- very vague term. Vented hatred is a very vague term against a private citizen. If you have somebody who's a public and this, the law makes a distinction between public people and private people. Anything yeah. short of doxing individual p- private addresses and violent threats should be allowed. Uh, what is or, doxing? Or defamation. Defamation. Well, he actually, Samuel Patti, did file a defamation suit. He did right. file a defamation suit against these people because that's what they were doing. They were saying that he distributed pornography to kids in class. Okay, mm-hmm. They posted his place of work. They told mm-hmm. people where he could be found. They ask people to mobilize against him. That is beyond, right? So yeah. I, you know, vented hatred is a vague term. That, you say, I don't like this guy because you know this is what he says, and he likes the cartoons. I mean, that's one thing. If you're saying that this is where the guy works, everybody should mobilize against him. He's been sending pornography out to your kids. Okay, that is targeted harassment against a private citizen. That is not covered by freedom of speech protections. You want to read this one? Yeah. Susanna is saying, The six-month order was for the sole purpose of preventing acts of terrorism. The notice issued by the head of the Saint Saint Dennis, sorry, I can't, I don't have French pronunciation, department read, and it's from Reuters. It was for the sole purpose of preventing acts of terrorism. So, yeah, but again, again, I agree with Susanna here. Oh, you want to say something? 
You say yeah, that's no, no. A, you you agree with that? I disagree with that. Susanna disagrees with that as well. Susanna is saying a blanket ban for six months is too much. Closure sl- solely for the duration of the investigation makes more sense. Yeah, that would make sense. Like we're investigating this, we're temporarily shutting this down for the investigation to be able to go through flawlessly. That makes sense. Closing down the entire mosque for six months that seems like an over government overreach. Uh, yeah, I guess I could see. I mean, I don't know the content. We don't know enough about what these guys did. Yeah, we're and, just concerned. We're con- I'm I'm concerned. I'm not yeah, saying but, that this is yeah. Yeah, the only point that I'm making is that when you're talking about um, again, when you're talking about a targeted harassment of a private citizen, that's not protected by any kind of free speech law. Um, so regarding the mosque, okay, sorry, there was another question that you had before that that oh, I yeah. didn't get a chance to read. Uh, uh, regarding the mosque ban, I can only find the verbiage crackdown on hate speech and inciting hatred, and it's much too vague. And that, yeah, that's yeah. what I was saying. That's a, that so we can vague. So, Ali, just like I'm saying, like I feel like you're, I'm acting a little bit more skeptical than you are, okay? Like, just because, mm-hmm. um, like I'm saying, like, I don't know if it was right, okay? I'm worried, I'm concerned, okay? But the language is vague here, and you're saying you you ju- you think that the, the, the you know you're taking the government side on this without necessarily knowing the details, right? So no, I'm, I'm, I'm being, actually being, I'm being uh, more skeptical. I'm yeah. being objective based on the details that we do know. So right. the details that we do know, right, is that the man was named. The man is a private citizen. His place of work was named. Um, people were encouraged to go and mobilize against him. And he was defamed by saying that he distributed pornography to your middle school children. All of those things together, okay, all of them, I, I, I that's targeted harassment against a private citizen. Period. I mean, it's, it's that's you know, pretty clear. Th- that's, I don't know. That's, There's so many things. That, you know, if that is justification, uh, hold on. If that's yeah. just if, if that considered to be private um, private harassment against a citizen. Then I have, you know, how many defamation lawsuits I, I need to go file right now against having so many people. No, do, you know how many, do you know how many Twitter comments will become illegal based on this criteria of what is considered so targeted harassment? I, I, I'm glad you brought that up. So you go out with the allies gay sign. Okay, come back. The video goes out all over the place. Okay, so they are told, you are told that you sexually harass people at the Pride, uh, Pride Parade, number one. Uh, you're told that uh, your place of work, okay, this is where he works. Here's the address. Uh, please mobilize against this guy. Go and find find this guy, okay? And uh, this is what he's doing to your kids. You have for that, in addition to the fact that you know we're a mosque, we're an Islamic, whatever, blah blah. blah. All of that would be targeted harassment, and you would be able to go to the police, file a report, okay, and mm-hmm. ask them for security because your life, your security, personal security, would be under threat. And it's as simple as that. There's no that people, anybody who's doing that against you, mm-hmm. okay. Combination defaming and doxing and everything and, and harassment. It's not. It's not legal. It's not legal. There's nothing to do with free speech. It just yeah, when it comes to when it comes to the tra- oh, the trade off between security and freedom, I'm always biased towards freedom, and I think I have enough good reasons for it. Yeah, like, but but you it. but you agree that that is different from free speech. Yeah, but again, the, it's the har- line. Do you understand I've, the idea of targeted harassment? Yeah, I understand that. I just think like the line. I I mean, the line of what should be considered illegal is way after that. Way after that, I think. Mm-hmm. Okay, so I, I think I, that's about enough. I think when somebody's personal security and personal uh, life is under threat and livelihood is under threat, then it's a problem. Then nobody. Oh. Then my life is un- constantly under threat, Ali. Okay. Um, even if it's minor threat, okay? It's not a major, go hold on. Ma- mm-hmm. Not major threat. My, my life is constantly under a minor level of threats. Nobody can target me based on your standards. They can't because they don't know where you live. They don't know where you work. They don't know where to find you personally and approach you personally. If that was made public so, online, so then if any form be- of activism, any form of activism that tells like, you know, so all form of protest when it comes to uh, identifying where somebody, where a law is being passed, where some meetings are, you know, like all these secular activists, um, climate change activists, animal rights activists, a lot of part of their activism requires identifying the offices where these, play, where these decisions are being made 
made so that they could share the address so they could go and do the protests over there. Um, and we, you know, so all of that will become illegal based on your standards. No, they wouldn't. Of course not, they wouldn't. That's completely different. If you say that, okay, at this office where this event happens, there is this one person, his name is Armin Navabi, he's going to be there at this time, and this is where... Is this what they did? Her. Exactly what they did. Okay. That's exactly right. what we did. The information that we did they know... They shared the hour, like they said, like, oh, they didn't say, they didn't just share no, the they school didn't of... the hour, Armin, Armin, hmm. Armin. They said... His name is Samuel Petty. He mm -hmm. distributed pornography to your kids. This is the school where he works at. Here's the address. And please go and mobilize against him. That's what they said. This stuff is known. There's nothing vague about that part of it. Now, mobilize, venting okay. hatred. Mm -hmm. Now, if you want to say, you know, venting hatred, that part of it, I don't know about. But these are the things that are known. And that mm -hmm. constitutes under any country, under France, under the U.S., under Canada, targeted harassment of a private citizen and threatening their security and defamation of course because he didn't distribute pornography to anybody so uh, I, I don't think that that's controversial at all right again i this could all be again as i mentioned before this could all be justified but i think it's also justified to be concerned yeah about the, thing that's, the, the thing you guys are talking about about the six month blanket ban and i i agree that that is probably I, I, closing it for the duration of the investigation makes a lot more sense. So I, I agree with that aspect. I mean, that's not mm -hmm. something that I'm going to really go nuts and, you know, push back against. But just in terms of this being a free speech issue, like I just completely disagree. Completely. This is clear targeted harassment. Okay, uh, next comment. 80s investigations. Oh, AD investigations into radical preachers and suspected extremists accused of spreading online hate and authorities assessing about associations in the Muslim community. Some will be dissolved. Okay, so I think investigations are fine. Like investigations is not like investigation is not taking action against somebody or limiting them. Uh, the French government has, I think, investigating things to see if something is a problem or not um, is always a good idea, right? Yeah. Well, not always, so. but yeah. Uh, no, so especially it depends on how you carry out the investigation because sometimes in some authoritarian governments, investigation means targeted harassment, right? So I don't, you know, so as long as investigation doesn't mean targeted harassment and actual just figuring what how things led to, um, you know, how things happen, that, yeah, that's, that, that is not violating anyone's rights. Uh, Faraz is saying, France needs to work on integration on making French Muslims feel French. That's exactly what we talked about in our previous episode previous before episode, all of this. Yeah. Uh, that, what just happened. They're actually yeah, I, taking I, initiatives to do that. Yeah, um, I mean, yeah, I, this seems good. Like, I'm, again, by the way, I just want to clarify about the previous episode. One thing I should have said is, like, these plans seems good. I don't know how they're going to be executed, okay? <laughs> because execution is the key. Coming up with great ideas is one thing. A nice executing... word choice for this episode, execution. But go oh, ahead. God damn it. Not the right... <laughs> but executing, like, if like you guys could come up, maybe, like, Macron's government carries them out and they all ended up backfiring or not being carried out properly. And you guys are like, well, Armin, you guys said this is a good idea. Ali, ha, 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 look how, how it turned out. Yeah. Again, rings, very, skepticism is always fair, okay? Yes, seems, look, seems like it's heading in the right direction, but we, could, we should wait and see. It could end up being you know, carried out very poorly, right? But it seems yeah. like it. But we should okay. always be skeptical about uh, you know, the people's skepticism as well. So meta-skepticism is also important. But anyway, let's, let's move on. Uh, Vasundra uh, Majithia is saying, how do you respond to the argument that France's free speech laws are hypocritical because they don't allow flag burning, Holocaust denial, etc.? Um, I, I actually agree with that. I wrote about that in yeah. the book. Said that yeah. France's laws, uh, that you know, this kind of thing, hate speech, uh, hate speech, hate speech, right? Should be. Um, I think the U.S. protects hate speech under under its First Amendment, but uh, yeah. France mm -hmm. doesn't. Right? Who was that fashion designer who got like? Who said something about Jews in a bar? Then he was jailed for six months. I mean, you'd never see that happening in the in the U.S. Right? That is, yeah, it's it's amazing that um, France, which is the birthplace of these Enlightenment values, managed to export these values uh, to United States, and they're being carried out more effectively in United States than than the birthplace of these ideas. Uh, I think it's a betrayal to France's 
um, commitment to enlightenment values that Holocaust denial or flag burning is illegal. I hope, I hope one day they manage to make all of these legal. And right. again, and, and that's why I raised the alarm when, and I know Trump will never be able to do this, but even mentioning that people should go to jail for flag burning in the United States from coming from such level of, um, such a level of authority from the highest office in the United States, that is or that's a major attack on enlightenment values. And we we called it out when Trump said that. Flag mm-hmm. burning should be legal as long as it's done safely. And Holocaust denial should also be legal. Um, yeah. We've been very clear on this. By the way, yeah. um, YouTube, we, please don't strike us down. We're not denying the Holocaust, okay? Holocaust happened. And <gasps> it was... Yeah, so, like, can you... No, Set no joke, word. Ali. No joke, Ali. Uh, yeah, I know we said it. I'm, but I, we already said it, so I had to... God damn it. YouTube, please, okay? Do not strike us. The only guys we fear is the YouTube guys. They already took... They already demonetized this channel for six months, and they might do it again. Uh, by the way, guys, if we do get the... Given how, if, how risky it is to do what we do because how f- easily our monetization um, goes away... Um, if we just say the wrong words or just YouTube algorithm just detects the wrong phrasing of words and the, the robot just strikes everything down and then the appeal process is a joke. The appeal process is a joke. So please, for us to make feel more safe doing what we're doing and to be able to re- re- you know, rely on this being something that we can focus on, uh, please consider becoming a patron. Link to our patron is in the description. But only do consider it if you're financially secure Anybody who's not financially secure, by the way, people who are watching this live, they're already all patrons, but the people who are listening to this later um, who are not patrons, if you're financially secure, please consider becoming a patron, link in the description. But again, do not become a patron. Do not even consider becoming a patron if you're struggling financially, okay? You can just share our videos, like our videos, comment, share our channel, recommend our podcast, that would be also very helpful. Anyways, let's end this very soon. Um, yeah. This one. Uh, Faraz is saying, Islam and secularism is like oil and water, like a turd floating in a toilet. Oh, okay. Just kidding. <laughs> I don't want backlash towards Muslims. Yeah, yeah I agree with that part. I, I, I don't. I mean, Islam and secularism is uh, like the second. The whole point of secularism is to allow freedom of religion. But we are going to have an episode in two days, 48 hours from now, so join us, where both Armin and I are going to make the case that a religious freedom should be abolished. That religious freedom is a BS concept, and it should be abolished. And uh, we're going to explain might, why later. The explanation might be surprising, so don't don't think we're being anti-enlightenment, okay? So just tune into that to see what we're going to say, okay? Yeah. But yeah, guys, I really did a big uh, no-no by mentioning the a- big H. The, well, you can say uh, it now. Yeah, the Holocaust. So this this is going to get really deprioritized. So if even if you don't want to support us financially, at least share this video so that we could, um, you know, highlight the fact, you know, trigger your YouTube's algorithm to make this video more people see it. Because, you know, if you say these words, YouTube is like, yep, we're not going to recommend this video to anybody. And that's the only way these channels grow. So please consider it. Please consider just sharing us at least, right? Anyways, let's end this here where we managed to do this under one hour. Ali, we did it. We're getting so much better. I'm being so curious. This is good. <laughs> All right, guys. Love everybody in the live chat. If you're in the live chat, that means you're a patron. Guys, if you're not a patron and you become a patron, then you get to watch this with us lives. And just like you can see, we highlighted people's comments. We, you know, you, you get to be part of the conversation. Uh, if you're watching this with us live, these episodes, uh, so yeah, and when you are a patron, we get we send you the link to um, the times and the place where we go live. So you get you, you, it would be so easy to join live with us. So yeah, if you're not a patron and you're watching this later, uh, if you're listening to this later, then consider becoming a patron. Link in the, the secular jihadists have been made possible thanks to the Illuminati and the covert support of Israel and the CIA. That's what we have been told, but we haven't received our checks yet. If you like what we do, please support us. Share the podcast with your friends. Write and tweet us with topic and guest suggestions. Or head over to secularjihadist.com and give a dollar or more for exclusive access to live video. Have your questions read and answered on the air and more. Till next time, may the flying spaghetti monster be with you.